Today we're going to talk about scarcity and the science of economics. So economics is based around the fundamental problem, which is scarcity. People need a lot of things and people want a lot of things, but there's not enough to go around. So economics is a study of how people try to satisfy these seemingly unlimited and competing wants through the careful use of relatively scarce resources. Economics is all about supply and demand, how much of a resource we have and how much people are demanding that resource, as well as the balance between those two things. There are three basic questions that we ask in order to make these types of economic choices. Sometimes it's governments that are asking these questions. Sometimes it is individuals or businesses asking these economic questions. But in general, there are three basic questions. The first is what? What should we produce? What do people want? What do we need? Next, we have how. How should we produce? Are we going to use machinery to do so in factories? Are we going to use uh, people? Is it going to be you know, like handmade? Um, how are we going to actually produce those things that people want and need? And the last is for whom? For whom are we producing? Are we producing something that is for businesses? Are we producing something for individuals, for adults, for children, for governments? So who is actually benefiting from those things that we are making? Those three questions are the questions basically that they, people ask um, in order to figure out what is the best use of those resources as well. There are four factors of production. These factors are needed in order to create a product. So once you figure out what you are producing, how you are producing, and for whom you are producing, next you have to figure out what are the factors, the things that you actually need in order to start production. The first one is land. These are gifts of nature, things that are not created by people, so natural resources. Stuff like deserts, fields, mineral deposits, livestock, climate, those sorts of things are all considered land. So land is not just the actual physical land, but also other natural resources that are on the land. Labor is the second factor. This is people with all their efforts, abilities, and skills. Labor is the people who work for others. This does not include entrepreneurs. They are a separate, um, they're a separate factor and as one of these four factors. Capital goods is the third one. Capital goods are the tools, equipment, machinery, and factories used in the production of goods and services. So we do have land, which is separate, but Anything that's not a natural resource that is created by man that is used in the creation of more goods and services is a capital good. So, for example, if you're an Uber driver, your car is a capital good. If you have a factory, the machinery in your factory is a capital good. The factory that you, the factory building itself is also a capital good. Any types of equipment or tools used are essentially capital goods. Capital meaning they are um, worth some amount of money as well. The fourth and final factor of production are entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs are risk takers. They want to make a profit, they have an idea, and they want to do something new with existing resources. So they start new businesses or bring new products to the market. One example that uh, it always comes to mind when I think of entrepreneurs is the show Shark Tank, and we're going to be doing a Shark Tank project in here. But essentially, Shark Tank is where people, they've come up with an idea, they started a product, um, they've made a prototype, they go to the sharks, and they try to get investment so that they can build their business from there. The next question is, what do economists do? Right, We have the idea of economics, where we're kind of analyzing supply and demand and all that, but what exactly are economists doing? First of all, they describe economic activity. What are people producing and what are people buying? This can kind of help lead the economy, right? If we figure out what people are buying, what people are producing, then we know where there is a need in our current economy for maybe a new product or a new manufacturer for a very popular product. GDP, gross domestic product, also fits in here. Um, GDP is essentially just a calculation of all of the different things that a nation creates or produces 
within one calendar year, and that is used as kind of a measure of the growth of economy. Economists also analyze economic activity. So they don't just kind of say what's happening. They also look at why are some prices higher than others? And why do people earn more than others? How do taxes affect people's desire to work and save? And of course, all this stuff, again, helps us kind of um, kind of think about some maybe predictions we're going to make for the future or how we can help people currently who are struggling economically. And that leads into um, the next one, explaining. So economists explain economic activity. Essentially, a lot of people don't quite understand the workings behind the economy because there's a lot there's a lot there. So a lot of these economic problems that are produced or that are created um, that just occur, they're easier to address and solve if people understand what is causing them. So economists are often the ones who are you know quoted in the news, for example, kind of explaining what's happening with the economy. They also predict future economic activity. So thinking about the past and kind of bringing those trends in, into our current day, um, trying to figure out what will happen. Lately, the prediction part has been very, where well, they use the word volatile, um, which means changing very, very quickly, especially because we have other factors that are um, affecting our economy currently.